we are in a severe climate energy crisis and we are like deeply without heroic efforts. That's why I'm working on this. It was true when I was 17 committed to it and it's true I'm 35 now. The demand for what we're trying to do is in the trillions of watts. It's immense. Hi, I'm Danielle Fong. I'm building Light Cell Energy, which is using fuel to produce incredibly bright, vivid light and converting that light into electricity at incredible energy densities greater than people had believed possible. I was always interested in, in the universe and big numbers and space was incredibly attractive to me. I was at a, a steel mill. I remember it was so hot in there and I remember walking past a column and my face went cool and I'm like, ah, what that means is it's actually infrared and that's a shadow. I remember running a calculation to see, hey, how much energy could a solar panel generate if it were face down facing this versus if it were outside? There was something on the order of maybe 10 times as much power. So that put me in a frame of mind of, I can convert heat into electric power. At the same visit to a steel mill, I noticed that there was a flame and it was green. I'm like, what's with this green? flame and they're like oh it's probably some copper interesting so i'm looking up why fireworks are different colors why flames are different colors before the fourth of july and then i went and saw the fourth of july i was seeing these plumes of fireworks go off and light up our faces and they were like half a kilometer kilometer away my god what is the actual brightness limitation like what's the power density of a firework it must be immense and because it's a vivid color that means it's nearly monochromatic so how monochromatic can it get i found that in particular sodium flares it was emitting almost all of its energy in in a tight band around 589 nanometers. Right now, I am just basically heating sodium right now. And so what we found in the technology of fireworks and pyrotechnics is a way to convert heat into that very narrow band light. If that light is nearly monochromatic, then solar panels that are tuned to that color can convert that energy extremely efficiently. Fuel to heat, heat to light, light to electricity. This was really exciting because we found that you could dramatically increase the efficiency of solar cells. And we think that we can get maybe 60, 70, 80% efficiency in this conversion. In the core part of the flame, the temperature is in excess of 2,000 degrees. So this is about one-tenth as bright as we've ever gotten it. The thing that really gets you excited about the idea of unleashing the power from fuels is its incredible energy density. It's like nature's incredible way to store power in a really tight, convenient package. It's similar to a rocket by the fact that we're providing fuel and oxidizer and reacting them rapidly to efficiently convert it into some ordered energy. In this, we're creating a particular kind of light, but like a rocket, it reacts pretty much as fast as you can provide the fuel and the oxidizer. That's really one of the keys for how the power density can be so high. We have this enormous global economy, 8 billion people with their habits and their dreams. We have to solve the problems so that the economic choice, the one that is convenient for people, is sustainable within the resources and the, the planetary systems that we have. And I believe that it's possible. I really think that if you have really small, compact, completely sustainable energy sources everywhere, they're just huge applications that people haven't even dreamt of yet. AI making its way into the world. Usually robotics are pretty duration limited. AI and extremely high energy density energy systems, they're kind of self-reinforcing. And together they could create a totally new era. Um, powered by light. There are going to be dozens of dimensions that we'll be improving on relentlessly. And even when people are copying us, they'll be copying an older version. And yes, we'll have IP. But really, at the end of the day, what matters is being out in ahead. Sam Altman told me, if you can convince people that you're the furthest ahead, that you're moving faster than anybody else, and you're accelerating, you'll probably win. That's what I focus on, moving as fast as I can. I know that if it's successful, there will be copycats. That is in the future. That's a success story. So it doesn't bother me that the idea will be visible. It's time for that. There are some number of bright ideas that you need to have to make any of these things work. And three co-founders and two contractors, and I've, I've got my family for some sort of additional slave labor. So we have to judge carefully what the important things for convincing us, convincing investors, and convincing customers are in terms of, of the technical pieces, because we can't do everything at once. We haven't figured out all of the answers for how to build a practical system yet. So far, 
far, we've shown that we can build an incredibly bright source, more than 60 times the brightness of like the day sun. Can we make a guess as to what can be done in six months? It is basically based on vibes. <laughs> Say, all right, we've accomplished this much. Here's the stretch goal that we can set and then you can run towards it. And you set up the company so that you're not dead if you can't do it. Now we're working on continually refining our, our, our scientific understanding of the materials, the reaction process that takes place, and the flows so that we can develop the engineering design rules to build this kind of pocket furnace, this portable Dyson sphere, your own personal sun, turn it into electricity, which is the most valuable and useful power for our electronic world. Thanks for watching the 14th episode of S3. I think in our like little tech bubble builders, people who are fans of the show, we are all sort of familiar with this idea of consuming energy, producing more, consuming more is actually good. But I think 99% of society thinks that actually we need to consume less, we need to save the planet. Just because some of this consumption has caused climate change and global warming, it doesn't mean we should just stop everything and stop consuming and producing energy. Uh, it just means we need to find better ways to do it. I think Danielle's shared idea of this and her approach to maybe finding new ways to produce more and consume more energy is, is really exciting and, and cool. I also love this episode because I feel like building an R&D startup is hard. Like, how do you do it? There's not a lot of like study cases for that. And I found Danielle's vision and idea of how to do that really, really interesting and inspiring. I'm super excited for next week because it's kicking off our bio blackout on S3, where for five consecutive episodes, we're only going to feature biotech companies. Biotech in general is super misunderstood or not understood entirely. I'm really excited to be diving into some of the leaders in this space and sharing their approaches to things. And I think the coolest thing in general is just how much more potential discovery, innovation still is there. There is not a lack of problems or things to work on in research in biology. And I think once you start learning some of the principles about it, like me going into this, I knew nothing about it. It's just been a trip and I can't wait to share that with you all on the show. So on that note, thank you again for watching. Keep on building the future and I'll see you next week when we talk about biological barcodes.